Good morning, folks. We've got a couple of top stories to get to today and a number of points to hit before that. But we're starting at spaceweathernews.com and we're checking out the last 24 hours on our star, finding a good bit of calm. Wannabe active region pulsing on the north, but it's all quiet, including that large plasma filament on the south. The solar wind is calming back down this morning as well. Purple line top left, that's plasma speed for the last three days, and you can see the entirety of the short-lived solar wind enhancement from the now departed coronal hole. We will continue to monitor the activity of these plasma filaments as they are the only features capable of strong eruptions at the moment. Folks, being in my city was miserable yesterday, and we didn't even come close to seeing the worst of the Valentine's cold wave that hit the upper Midwest. This few day stretch is shattering hundreds of records and it's not quite done yet. They'll be discussing this winter for a century. Let's head out to space for cool news out of the top planet finder in space right now. TESS identified a triple star system, outer binary component, inner three planets orbiting the larger star, including an Earth-like planet getting scorched nearby, a hot Earth. Up next, I'll go ahead and answer this title question and many others in the geoengineering realm all at once. No. There is no good in weather modification, just ignorance of thinking you have total understanding, like a god, and then trying to play god in the sky. Stop it. A nod for veteran observers into the list of the variability and unbelievably wide range of stellar outbursts. We've seen shockingly powerful hypernova, and we've seen stars have recurrent nova events less powerful than common solar flares. Speaking of nova events, gorgeous one here is a bipolar jet which can be seen emerging from the concentric blast-out sphere. Very solid study here, fortifying the ultra-short-term solar particle forcing of the Earth's atmosphere. Within 10 minutes of the solar wind pulse, field-aligned currents transfer this energy into the auroral zones of the ionosphere, the electrojets. Now these not only induce parallel currents in the atmosphere and ground, but they amplify the global electric circuit, which is tied to the ionosphere. This rapidly modulates clouds and atmospheric electricity, and this is what you miss when you focus on irradiance instead of particle forcing. Last but not least, the Black Sea never fails to do two things when it comes to sedimentary analysis. First, 90% of the data pools show incoherent variation with no pattern or harmony with each other, but second, you always find a diamond in the rough. We do see some common spikes separated by 11 to 12,000 years, hinting at the Earth's disaster cycle. But also, the oxygenation gives us something better. Instead of looking for spikes here, you're looking for trends, and this one clearly shows the alternation. Like the tropical and polar fossil layer alternation discovered in Project Nanook, it implies that sometimes this area is at one latitude, and sometimes it's at another. We greatly appreciate your support. For more on the Sun's version of a miniature nova, for more on Earth's magnetic cycle and the varying latitude pattern that comes with it, see the disaster playlist we have on our channel page. Our textbook on solar climate forcing can be found at otf.cells.com. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe because we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.